Hello friends and welcome back. Today I said I would be talking about Strata by Terry Pratchett. Got it right behind me here. But I'm also going to be talking about ebooks, paper books, and audiobooks. Da -da 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 -da. I don't know, I think I was putting up a uh, flashcard there. I might change the name. Simple Vids is a bit simple and there's a lot of simple vids out there. Maybe something like Moriarty's Musings. Hmm. Alright, but first things first. How is Strata? Well, um, I don't know yet because I haven't finished it. <laughs> Get used to that phrase. Um, I'm about 40% of the way through and early guess is that it's still very good. It's very much Terry Pratchett's style. Um, and you can see his, uh, he sort of hit the ground running with his style. It's right there in that book just as much as it is in any of his other sort of books. Um, you get to see the groundwork for what later became the Discworld novel idea. What I like is the scope of the book, because the main characters have gone on this mild adventure to all these different planets, because, you know, it's a planet-making society, but they find one disc, and it's literally a disc world. Uh, it's flat, there's, there's a fake sun that goes around it, everything is done to make this disc as opposed to just the whole planet, which would cost way too much money, and is just using all these resources, which makes no sense. Why would they do this? I don't know. I'm, I'm only halfway through the book, but the mystery, the bigness of it is there, and that's how I like my science fiction. A lot like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, where, you know, if you're not blowing up a world or exploding a world, like, if you're not going to get that big, why are you in science fiction at all? Um, early days, I'm giving it a 7 out of 10 so far. It is very good Pratchett, but nothing's really grabbed me about it so far. Now on to books. There are pen and paper books, there are audiobooks, and there are ebooks which is short for electronic books, I guess. Um, they're much more affordable. Uh, you've probably downloaded some yourself. Uh, I remember when audiobooks were CDs that cost 40 bucks or something like that. But what do I personally think of them all? Well, um, I do prefer normal paper books by default. Uh, there's something about holding it tangibly in your hand. Um, also, have you seen the, the joint collection I have of them? Quite, quite a bit, big fan. But I did think I should give audiobooks and ebooks a go before I just panned them and just never ever tried them out. I mean, hey, maybe I would like them. Uh, I think off the top of my head, the best thing about ebooks is the worst thing about ebooks, which is the reader. How are you reading them? Is it on a screen on your mobile phone? Is it on like just any web page browser that you're using? Is it on an actual device like the Kindle or the Nook uh, designed for reading books? How well do they look? How much do your eyes burn alive if you haven't got the blue screen turned off? But at the same time, if it's in a text you don't like, you can change the font. Uh, there's one for dyslexic readers. Look it up because uh, it makes the O's nice and big and fat so that they don't blend into each other, which I suffer from constantly. I have to read some sentences three times to even recognize what words I'm looking at. Whereas with this um, dyslexic text, I can actually hold it at this distance and read it despite being, you know, size 10, size 12 print. So that's a real good benefit of um, ebooks. Uh, not only that, but on one device like the phone you might be watching this on right now. Hi. Uh, you can have 120 books if you can afford it all. Plus a lot of books are free to get you into a series or like 99 cents and then part two is four bucks, five bucks, whatever else bucks. <clears throat> Do you know anyone who does that? I, I don't. Uh, but you know, accessibility is a huge, huge, huge up point. If you've got your phone on you and who doesn't always have the phone on you, you've got a book. You can read. You've got something to waste your time on. When I thought I'd give ebooks a try, I sought out two stories I definitely wanted to read legitimately and would buy the paper book version of. So one is um, A Legacy of Spies by John Le Caire. I think I've got that right. And then uh, A Voyage to Arcturus, which is 100 years old. And I'm reading them in two different ways. Legacy of Spies is just on my phone. And um, Voyage to Arcturus is actually on the Gutenberg.org website. Check it out. Anything that's 100 years old becomes public domain, and you can read them for free. You don't have to go and buy them. You can read them for free. HTML, text file, EPUB, .mubi, uh, whatever format you want to want. So having Legacy of Spies on my phone was always good. I mean, I might be at work, might be in the bathroom, I might be uh, stuck in, in the train somewhere, and I can just read them. Um, on Voyage to Arcturus, I read on an actual web page as I was at work. So I would be serving customers when there was no one else. I just flick, keep reading somewhere else, flip. No one could see, no one could tell. Easy peasy. But it was like reading an old HTML website that you would have on old GeoCities, if you remember that. I think I just tipped my hand. You might know I'm a couple more years older than 21, hey? 
I think the best thing about the ebooks is the accessibility because if I've got my phone, I've got them. The problem is because they aren't physical books like this, I haven't finished either of them. I've had them both for months. Uh, I know exactly where I am in both of them, but uh, if I don't see them, I don't think of them. And if I don't think of them, I don't read them, even though they're both very good and I do want to read them. But I just see this wall full of text and books and, and all the other nerdy stuff around the house. And I don't think of it unless I'm accidentally in the folder looking at some other book. And then I skip past and I'm like, oh, right, I've still got that spy book. So it's kind of invisible when everything's in the one spot. If you've got 100 books, how are you going to find the one that you do want? I hate that. Uh, but then again, you can say the exact same counter argument here. Which book am I reading today? I don't know. I picked a, a Legacy of Spies, which is sort of the prequel sequel to The Spy Who Came In From The Cold. I give very, very quickly. The Spy Who Came In From The Cold gets 9.5 out of 10. It's the best spy novel I've ever read. Uh, I remember reading it on the train when I finished it, and I was so excited and happy finishing the book. Got up to the second last chapter. It was fantastic. I read the ending. And I just very slowly closed the book and said nothing for the rest of the trip. That's a good book. <clears throat> Next, we have audio books. How do they stack up? Well, I used to drive an hour to work every day. So I'd have an hour to listen, you know, on the way down, on the way back up. But the problem is you no longer have a book that you read to yourself with your own tone and thoughts and sense of the characters. There's somebody who's acting it out, and you have to, one, like their voice, two, like the way they read it, and three, they're performing the book for you. So it sort of becomes an audio play book. You could call it an audio book. What have I said here? You know, uh, someone has to embody the characters, tone, pace, all of it. So it's rather like a podcast. Now, as soon as you say the word podcast, I can think of a billion out there that I'd like to listen to. Quite often they have episodes about an hour long each, and uh, I haven't got time to listen to the podcasts, which are many characters, and, you know, it's probably role-playing games like Pathfinder uh, or Call of Cthulhu, whatever. They're more interesting to me than reading someone, than listening to a book read by somebody who might or might not be good. I can think, I've got two podcasts I listen to, and both of those have about three or four different stories that they're going through right now, and I haven't got time for those seven things to listen to, let alone this one book. But... In an effort to really listen to, uh, to really give audiobooks a go, I read, I don't know if you can see that, The Name of the Wind. Uh, I listened to The Name of the Wind by Patrick Rothfuss. Uh, it's a very good book. I would like to reread it myself, actually, one, one year when I've got time. And the actor who did it, he did a really, really good job. Like, the, the character, the tone, every character did sound different. It was obvious who was speaking just to listen. Even though it was all the same voice, it was a different intonation, way of speaking, all that sort of stuff. So an insane amount of acting work went into just reading the book out bit by bit. But after 21 hours, I'd had enough of the guy's voice. I, I, I enjoyed the story still, but every time I got in and went, all right, press play, click, it was the same sound. It didn't become jarring. It just became irritating to have the same voice, like basically having someone yammer in your ears for 21 hours. And yes, it was interesting, but no, I was not engaging anymore. So as I slowly got closer and closer to the 21 hours being finished, it felt longer and longer. So uh, not really a fan of the audiobooks. I wouldn't do it again. I have got the actual second book, uh, The Wise Man's Fear. That's 42 hours because Patrick, Patrick Rothfuss just writes, you know, book of books, every book. Um, it's the same actor, he's doing the same good job, and I listened to it for about an hour before it got to the exact same point in my ear where it was like a mosquito going, for a whole book. Which is a real shame, because it is fantastic, high quality, it's just me, I just can't listen to it. Oh well. Uh, compare that to, you know, a podcast about some hilarious fantasy trope where all the players are messing up, and there's goblins and fireballs and four or five different voices, and uh, it just, it just, I've got different things to do with my ears and my time driving and I don't really want to listen to 42 hours of the same person as much as I like the story. I don't like it being spoken to me. I've got Lord of the Rings and they're read by some old codger. He might be a professional who's studied Tolkien a lot or he might just be one of those old voices but it sounds like some cranky old ancient man talking uh, through a very long boring book if you're not actually interested in it and his golem was just terrible. And Sam and Frodo, horrible. On the other hand, 
Andy Serkis just redid all three of them, and he's fantastic. He is the voice of Gollum in the movies, uh, and he does all the singing. He does it 100% gung-ho. I would be behind him rather than the other ones, but I'd already bought them all, and I'm not buying the books that I already own two times now. Sorry, two times now, because I've got the copies and I've got now the audiobooks that I'll never listen to. So, you know, it's, it's a bit of a crapshoot, but I, if I had no option but to go audiobooks, I would. But as long as my eyeballs work and I've got either the paper book or a digital phone thing, device, I will read them. And if it comes down to paper versus digital, I'm much more likely to get a paper book and read that. Um, but yeah, that's, that's what I think of it. Um, and what did you think of my rating system from the other week? Uh, I'm just going to cheat here and read exactly what I've written in the script. Have you used it yourself? Look, I'll use it right now on the various forms of books now available. Paper books, 8 out of 10. Love it. Mwah. Um, sometimes 9 out of 10 because I'm still talking about books I read like decades ago. And I love that because you can pick it up, read it, you can feel it. When you get a book that's really good and someone else has used it so much that the pages aren't stiff anymore, they're kind of bent a little bit, that speaks volumes about the care that's gone into the book and love. I love that. Um, digital books, what have I said here? Uh, 7 out of 10, perfectly possible. Audiobooks. Ah, 5 out of 10. I don't like them personally. I think there's plenty of issues to finding a good one or to finding a good story by someone who does it properly that you can listen to for ages. Uh, but I can only stand someone for this many hours. And it's a shame because it's truly good work in my one example. But uh, just can't stomach it. Not only that, but in audiobooks... If someone's performing it to you, then you don't take it in the same way. You can't slow down and go, oh, that's a beautiful scene. I want to see that again. You sort of have to, you know, pause the audiobook while you're driving and then the cops pull you over and they're like, oi, what are you doing? And you're like, I'm daydreaming about Golem. Don't do that. Uh, yeah, so. <clears throat> Just as a heads up, there we go. Halfway through. But, uh... Did I just lose my spot? I'm Moriarty. What are you reading?